Hey, how is everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. As you guys see, we got three topics for this Minnesota Vikings news segment. We're going to be talking about Sauce Gardner, or my Gardner, the cornerback from Cincinnati, who could be going to the Minnesota Vikings in this upcoming NFL draft. We're talking about Patrick Peterson's contract, whether should the Vikings bring him back or should they just let him go and try to save some more money and put it elsewhere. And then also Kane Wongwu. Rising up there is one of my top five favorite Vikings of all time. He needs the ball next year, and I think he's going to absolutely explode under the Kevin O'Connell offense. Let's talk about all this right now. Right, so Ahmad Gardner, also known as Sauce Gardner, he goes to the University of Cincinnati, and he is six foot two, 200 pounds, and he is just... He reminds me a lot of Xavier Rhodes. And I know Vikings fans, Xavier Rhodes, we have very good memories and we have very bad memories. Because when Xavier Rhodes, when he was good and he was that lockdown guy where you throw him on one side of the field and you just shut down that whole side, he was that man. But then as we saw, as he kind of got a little older in his career and uh, there was some dissent between him and Zimmer, he really fell off. And he really fell off fast. So... Sauce Gardner, he's 6'2", 200 pounds. In his whole college career, he played over 1,000 snaps, and he did not give up a single touchdown, according to PFF. So that, listen, those, that, that, those type of stats where it says, like, oh, this corner hasn't given up, you know, 45 yards or more than 45 yards to receiver all year. You always have to take those with a grain of salt. Those are always great stats to have on a corner. But also, PFF doesn't exactly know the responsibilities of the corner in that position. So it's it's pretty hard to ju judge 100% correctly, but it's definitely a very good stat to have. Some takeaways from just watching Sauce Gardner and kind of the, the clips that I was watching and uh, just watching him throughout the year because I did actually get to see him a lot. He's incredibly long. Like that 6'2", it feels like a 6'2 for a corner. He's got long arms. He's got beautiful technique for a big corner which is something i i was shocked when i was going in kind of trying to watch sauce gardner because i'm on the Derek stingley jr bandwagon the corner from lsu who i think the vikings should draft but when i was watching him he really closed that gap i mean he's got great speed great technique great ball skills he would be more of a development uh, i shouldn't say that i don't think he'll be more of a development than Derek stingley i think maybe his prime would be like in a couple years where I think Derek Stingley could walk in and be a top corner in the NFL. But Sauce Gardner, the Vikings would take him at 12. I'm popping this bottle of Remy Martin. I mean, I, I would be ecstatic. So Sauce Gardner taking him at 12. Vikings definitely need to consider it. All right, Patrick Peterson. Patrick Peterson. I remember the moment when I was, uh, I was at a bar last semester and I got the notification on my phone that the Vikings were signing Patrick Peterson. And I <laughs> obviously being the crazy Vikings fan that I am I started freaking out I was like I was like oh Vikings are going to the Super Bowl this is it this is the last piece of the puzzle we need and I was wrong 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 Patrick Peterson this year he was solid he definitely had his games where he played really really well and I think a lot of teams kind of sh stayed away from him not because he was so good I think teams just realized the Vikings second and third corners were so bad last year that why would they risk kind of attacking the veteran corner even though Patrick Peterson had a very good year if he wants to come back for a two-year 20 million dollar deal you say hell no I mean the only contract I would bring him in for is a one-year deal I think we don't have any loyalty to him he played in Arizona his whole career he obviously came here but there's no type of uh it's not like he's Harrison Smith where it would like really hurt the fan base if we let him go if we didn't see Patrick Peterson next year nobody would really say anything so we kind of have that sort of leverage but I think if he's going to need to come back he needs to be on the right price because we would still have him being a mentor role I'm assuming we're picking up at least one corner in the first two rounds and then one kind of big time name in free agency so it would be good to have another brain in the locker room who he can help out ed donatel and uh, mike petton on defense especially in the secondary and him and harrison smith running ideas off each other both smart dudes both played in the nfl for a while so again it's one of those things in the nfl bring back patrick peterson but for the right price tag we can't give just like how we gave harrison smith the four year 64 million dollars last year don't do the same thing with Patrick Peterson. We're under new management. It's a new regime. I don't think it will happen. All right, we're wrapping this up by talking about one of my favorite Vikings players at the moment, and that's Kane Wongwu. And the gadget guy from Iowa, he, 
I was just watching his clips last night, and I was just I was just bored. I just threw on like his two touchdown returns. I threw on some of his college highlights. It makes me so mad, like so mad that they did not use him last year. Like I literally cringe. Like I cringe right now talking to you guys that they did not get the most out of Kane Wangu last year because he, I mean, he is night and day faster than anybody on the Vikings. And then this brings me back to the Dalvin Cook contract. Kane Wangu, just watching him and watching Madison, seeing the way they could bounce off each other at $4 million a year, how good we could be at the running back position. It's just, it makes me start thinking of the Kevin O'Connell offense. You got Kane coming in motion, coming from the slot. It's either going to be a jet sweep or a power handoff to Madison. I I, I can just tell Kevin O'Connell if he's, if he's like me and he's just imagining all these crazy plays he can draw up with Kane Wangu. I mean, he's getting excited because you, the Vikings just didn't throw him screens. They didn't get him the ball outside. When they did run him, it was like between the tackles. Like it was just, it just made me very frustrated going back and watching the way they used him. And then when they actually ran him pretty well, I think it was against the Chicago Bears. He had like three carries for 37 yards. They ran him outside the tackles. They ran the outside zone scheme to him. So I'm just happy that he's another player where our coaches will realize where his strengths are better than our last coaches did. And they'll get the most out of him. He's going in the year two. Just fantasy guy, a guy you could put in your flex potentially. Just keep an eye out for Kenny Wongu, especially if the Vikings move off Dalvin Cook, which I'm really starting to think they are. Just watch that. Just watch Kenny Wongu. And I don't know, maybe they aren't moving off Dalvin Cook because Dalvin Cook's talking Super Bowl and everything, if you guys have seen that. So we'll see. Quezzy, he definitely has a plan, but Kane Wongo is definitely going to be a part of the offense way more than he was last season, and I cannot wait. Let me know what you guys think about the three topics we discussed down below. Sauce Gardner, Patrick Peterson, and Kane Wongo. What would you guys do about all three? Thank you guys so much for the support on the channel, and always, Skull Vikes.